Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Kim Brown. Canadian MP Elizabeth May told reporters on Monday that she will stay on as leader of Canada's Green Party after saying she was considering stepping down because of her opposition to the party's recently adopted policy of endorsing the strategy of boycott, divest and sanctions against Israel. Joining us today to discuss is Dimitri Laskatis. He is the attorney who does legal work in the fields of human rights and environmental law. He is also the justice critic in the shadow cabinet of the Green Party of Canada, and he is a board member of the Real News Network. Dimitri, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Dimitri, the Green Party adopted the BDS resolution during their convention this summer because they support a two-state solution between Palestine and Israel. Elizabeth May seems to really want to have the party revisit this. Can you bring us up to speed on this issue? Right. Well, she, uh, Elizabeth, I think, has been very clear uh, about the party support for the two-state solution, uh, a sovereign Palestinian state along uh, essentially the 1967 borders. In fact, the international community, including the current and predecessor Canadian governments, have been very clear in their support for the two-state solution. Uh, one of the fundamental obstacles, if not the biggest obstacle by far, to the two-state solution is Israel's settlements in the West Bank and its uh, punishing siege, an inhumane siege on Gaza, which is creating a humanitarian crisis. And uh, Ms. May, our leader, has quite rightly acknowledged the illegality of the settlements and that our party in 2014 adopted a policy which uh, explicitly recognized that they were an obstacle to peace. And where, you know, where Ms. May and I part company is how best to achieve uh, a two-state solution. And uh, my, my simple proposition and the one that I, I think was clearly embraced by a substantial majority of the members of the party on three occasions uh, in the last six months in an online vote in a workshop at the convention and in the full plenary vote in the convention is that we're never going to have a two-state solution unless we uh, ensure uh, Israel's respect for human rights law and that means that there have to be penalties appropriate penalties imposed on those sectors of Israel's sec uh, society and economy that are uh, profiting from the occupation and the settlements uh, that's all that this resolution does. It says, you know, as long we, we want to bring about an end to the settlements and a real negotiation towards a two-state solution by imposing peaceful economic and political sanctions on those sectors of Israel's society and economy, uh, which uh, profit from the occupation. Ms. May, I think, uh, you know, I don't want to speak for her, but I think she, her view is that there are other methods uh, that are more likely to be successful I think all other methods have been exhausted, and, and quite some time ago, in fact, they were all exhausted. And this is the only real hope remaining to the Palestinian people. That's, that's my perspective. So a couple of questions here, Dimitri. So how does the Green Party of Canada, how would your party uh, be able to implement a strategy of BDS, boycott, divest, and sanctions against Israeli interests, I imagine, in Canada? Explain to me how this would work. Well, what this resolution is, it's an, it's an expression of support for the BDS movement, which I think has quite significant uh, moral uh, and uh, symbolic force for the Canadian public. We are operating in an environment here in Canada, and this is true of other Western countries like the United States and France, in which apologists for the government of Benjamin Netanyahu, an extreme, violent, and racist government, are uh, creating very powerful disincentives to express support for BDS. Uh, in this country, we had a resolution passed uh, with the support of the, I think, to the shame of the Liberal government and uh, the Conservative government, who seemed to have at the, the Conservative Party, who seemed to have virtually no concern whatsoever for the plight of the Palestinian people. They adopted a resolution which came very close to uh, describing support for BDS as anti-Semitic. And uh, as I say, you're seeing this in other countries. And what we are doing through this, and I think quite properly and quite bravely as a party, is we are breaking the taboo, which uh, the apologists for the Netanyahu government are trying to build around the BDS movement. They're trying to make it taboo to even talk about it, to express support for it. So we are saying that a party that has representation in the Canadian parliament is prepared to express support for the BDS movement. This taboo is illegitimate, and people should be free to come forward and uh, to give support by, for example, refusing to buy products um, for, from, uh, that, are, that are manufactured in the West Bank. Uh, so this is really an important symbolic uh, expression of support. 
it will uh, ignite and has ignited an important and essential conversation about how we bring about a two-state solution after all of the failed attempts and Israel's ongoing settlement activity in the West Bank. That's where I think we have something to contribute. And I think that the pushback we're getting from the government of Israel and its apologists, like the B'nai B'rith, demonstrate quite clearly uh, that the government of Israel is concerned about the BDS movement. The government of Israel knows that this could actually have an impact on its economy, and it's trying to shut down debate about BDS precisely for that reason. Mm. And there was some pushback within Canada, even within the Green Party of Canada, about adopting the BDS uh, resolution. And Elizabeth May, she said that the reason that she is not stepping down from the party as a whole is because she didn't see another political party um, that that would be a, a suitable home for her. And but she did say she gave serious consideration about stepping down from her leadership position. What does it say to you that she did not elect to do that today? Well, I think it's, a, it's good news for the party. Uh, Elizabeth has many wonderful qualities. Uh, she has uh, deputy leader Daniel Green commented on television today, she's developed an institutional knowledge about Parliament, something that we need in this party because we've only had one seat, uh, we've only won one seat in Parliament, Elizabeth's seat. So it's, it's a positive development uh, that she, certainly uh, very good news for the party that she's staying on at the helm. And I think that it does reflect the fact that, uh, uh, you know, Elizabeth's core values are consistent with the core values of the party, and she understands that. Where else uh, is she going to find uh, a party that uh, respects those core values, the Liberals who uh, support Bill C-51, the anti-terror law that's highly oppressive, uh, that want to see tar sands pipelines constructed, uh, that support democracy-destroying trade agreements like the Trans-Pacific Partnership and the CETA. No, this is the party where, you know, a, a, a fine individual like Elizabeth May is most at home. Uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, at the end of the day, she will see the wisdom in support for BDS I'm going to do all that I can uh, to impress upon her that it's the right thing to do. And she commented today, uh, you know, that uh, she doesn't believe, and I respect her opinion, but she doesn't believe that uh, we should be endorsing social movements uh, like BDS. But uh, this is exactly what our party did when it endorsed the LEAP Manifesto. The LEAP Manifesto uh, is it, it fundamentally a social movement. Uh, it's an expression of will of a social movement. It isn't a partisan political document. And if we're prepared to endorse something as uh, important and as uh, socially constructive as the Elite Manifesto, there's no reason why we wouldn't take, in my view, a strong stand for Palestinian rights and say that Israel should be made to pay appropriate, peaceful, economic, and political penalties for its clear violations of international law. And, Dimitri, lastly, is the Green Party of Canada sort of alone politically when it comes to BDS as a, as a strategy, as, you know, something to endorse, even symbolically. Uh, what about the Trudeau administration? Have they, have they shown any appetite for wanting to pressure Israel into a more equitable two-state solution? None whatsoever. And it's shameful. I mean, the government of justice, I was just looking today at the government of Canada website. And it says explicitly that the settlements, quite properly recognizes the settlements are a, viola a violation of international law and an obstacle to peace, and that the occupation should come to an end as quickly as possible. But uh, he's, he's saying these things, Justin Trudeau and his predecessors, out of one side of his mouth, and out of the other side of his mouth, every time somebody like Benjamin Netanyahu comes to this country, they roll out the red carpet and they embrace him as one of Canada's dearest friends on the international stage. Justin, the Justin Trudeaus of this world are paying mere lip service to the plight of the Palestinian people. But I think that this is going to start changing now. If we hold firm and we stick with the resolve of the majority, the clear will of the majority, there is going to be an impetus in other movements, and I think particularly other parties, particularly the NDP, uh, where I know there to be a very uh, broad-based support for BDS amongst the grassroots. There's going to be an impetus in that party to... Uh, it, it, to, to cause the leader, the new leader, whoever it's going to be, to adopt a position that reflects the will of its members. And we can start uh, a, a snowball effect, as it were. And then I think at that point, once the NDP signs on, and I'm confident that eventually the grassroots will prevail in that debate, uh, then we can start working on the Liberal Party and the grassroots of the Liberal Party. All right. Well, we've been joined with Dimitri Lascadas. He is an attorney who does legal work in the fields of human rights and environmental law. He is also uh, the justice critic 
for the shadow campaign of the Green Party of Canada. We've been discussing Elizabeth May, the leader of the Green Party of Canada, announcing on Monday her decision to stay on as leadership there, in spite her opposition uh, to the adaptation of BDS uh, by the Green Party of Canada at their convention. Dimitri, we appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Kim. Thanks for watching The Real News.